you must give it or the patient dies. With blood loss, we give a blood transfusion or the patient dies. Now, if a child or an adult has low growth hormone levels and they're not growing, we give the patient growth hormone therapy. Well, the same is true of thyroid hormone. So why is it when our sex hormones drop, we don't want to replace them? The standard has become to avoid hormone replacement. So you may ask, what are the bioidentical hormones? Well, as stated earlier, the FDA banned this term. Sometimes they're called natural hormones. These hormones are made in factories that probably have smokestacks coming out of the roof. So it's not like these hormones are coming out of a flower. But what they are is the exact same molecule that's found in the body. That's all bioidentical means. And that's what differentiates the hormones from man-made drugs. Prempro, for example, is a man invention. This drug is synthesized from horse urine, which is one of the ingredients that's an estrogen unique to horses. Now, long before the WHI study, I told women not to use Prempro because we have human estrogens and it makes no sense taking a horse hormone. But actually, the horse hormone hasn't been shown to be bad or that ineffective. But it just isn't logical if we have the human hormone readily available. Now, no one has done a 20-year study to see if you might start growing buck teeth because of taking a horse hormone. And I don't want my wife or daughter to take that risk. Now let's go through the different estrogen hormones. Now, first of all, there's hormones that are create. These hormones are created by plants as the raw material. That doesn't mean that eating a plant will give you the hormone. Now I'm not against mankind creating miraculous things, such as synthesizing the human hormone out of a plant. But what I don't like is the greed for profit at the expense of health. But unfortunately, that's the creed of the ruthless corporates. Now, estrone is one of the estrogens. It's usually the most abundant estrogen after menopause. It's thought to be related to breast cancer. Estrone is increased by body fat, which we know is correlated to breast cancer risk. One thing I recommend is to do lab tests to see how your body metabolizes estrogen when you're on hormone replacement therapy. Now, estradiol is a super estrogen. It's the one that increases good cholesterol and lowers your bad cholesterol. It helps lower your triglyceride levels. It increases your bone density. It gives you a better mood. It improves your energy. It's an antioxidant. It improves memory. It prevents Alzheimer's disease. And it helps with the absorption of minerals. Now, magnesium is a mineral that is low in most everyone in the United States. The commercial fertilizers used now by mega agriculture doesn't replace magnesium into the soil. Now, the level of magnesium in our food supply is going down, down, down. Now, stress also lowers magnesium levels. Now, it seems to me that stress is rising in our culture year after year as we have more and more things to worry about. So, stress burns up our magnesium. Taking estrogen helps you absorb magnesium. Now let's talk about estriol. This is an estrogen I've been prescribing for many years and the FDA banned it a few years back. The ban hasn't officially taken effect because the pharmacies are still selling it. Now, the reason they banned it is one of the drug companies, it just so happens it was the drug company that makes Premarin, put forth to Congress a citizen's petition to have it banned. Congress uh, had the pharmaceutical lobbyists, which there is about 100 lobbyists per congressman, and they were vying to get the petition passed while poor old generic estriol was without any representatives. Now, estriol is used in Europe to treat breast cancer. It tempers the cell stimulation that estradiol and estrone cause, but there's no definite proof that it reduces cancer risk. Now, epidemiological studies show that women with higher estriol levels have much lower breast cancer rates. There's never been any side effects or problems with its use. So what are the reasons that may cause the FDA to ban it? Well, the FDA rarely approves natural compounds. 
It's prescription drugs that the pharmaceutical companies have paid to go through the FDA approval process. And no pharmaceutical company in the United States has an estriol product. It's interesting, though, to note that the company who put this citizen's petition about estriol has estriol in phase two clinical trials with their own formulation. So it's a roundabout way of corning the market by getting it banned and then selling it at 10 times the cost of the generic product. This strategy, in my mind, is criminal fraud. Now, I wrote my congresswoman, Gabriel Giffords, a letter, and I said I was outraged that estriol was being banned. She replied back just a few days later and stated that she presented a bill to Congress to get the measure repealed. Now, I don't know if that was because of my letter, but she did write me a personal note saying that she and several other senators were also outraged. The trouble with the estriol is that it doesn't help the heart, the bone, or the brain. So we can't use estriol instead of estradiol. Another part of our problem is our exposure to xenoestrogens. These are chemicals that imitate estrogen and attach to the, uh, to the estrogen receptor, but don't have the same effects. Now these are in pesticides, synthetic hormones that are fed to our food supply, plastics, and cosmetics. So, on to the evidence. There is a French cohort study of bioidentical hormone replacement with over 3,000 women during a nine-year period. They used estradiol and bioidentical progesterone. In this study, uh, in particular, 58% used the bioidentical progesterone and less than 3% used the bad progestins. I call, it, I call this bad progesterone which means it has been proven to be harmful to your health in the WHI study. Now in the French study, there was almost twice, which was almost twice as long as the WHI, found that breast cancer relative risk was slightly lower on the hormone-treated group versus the control group. There certainly wasn't any increase in breast cancer. In other words, there was slightly less risk for breast cancer with women taking hormones than those not taking hormones. Now this is very powerful evidence that estrogen does not cause an increase in cancer. So our doctors can't say there's no evidence that bioidentical hormones are safer than the fake versions. The estrogen in Premarin and PremPro is taken orally, which means it's absorbed through the digestive tract and goes into the portal vein. The portal vein goes straight to the liver where the hormone is then metabolized. So if you take a pill, it gets metabolized in the liver before it goes to the body. Now the problem with this is if, if you take estrogen and hormone replacement or even a birth control pill, it raises the risk of blood clots. There's a warning on the label for all birth control pills and Premarin that this happens. So you run the risk of a pulmonary embolism, deep vein, thrombosis, or maybe even a heart attack. But if women apply estrogen through the skin in a cream or gel, then it goes into the main vein of the body and travels to the heart and then to the body instead of going to the liver first. This is how estrogen went to your body before hormone replacement, when it was made by the ovaries. So if you follow the creator's design, studies show that you don't get the clotting risk. Now the drug companies do have patches of estradiol and they can be used. I use them a lot in my practice. The commercial patches though aren't as optimal as the bioidentical hormones that are compounded because you can individualize the dose better and you don't have to use a one size fits all patch. The important message about estrogen and breast cancer is to reduce the metabolism to estrone. Transdermal estrogen avoids the liver pass, which is beneficial. Now ways to uh, reduce the estrone production is reduce alcohol use, reduce your body fat, keep exercising, and lowering the man-made fats in your diet by eating an overall nutrient-dense diet, which I discuss in great detail elsewhere. 
Now, I'm not against animal fat if it's from an animal that's been raised properly. Dairy products shouldn't be processed. So let me summarize my conclusions of the breast cancer risk with bioidentical hormones. The WHI study showed that even horse estrogen does not cause breast cancer or increase breast cancer rates. It's the synthetic progestin drug that raises breast cancer risk and heart attacks. So you wanna stay away from PrimPro and all other progestin containing drugs. Estriol and natural progesterone may protect against breast cancer, but there's not conclusive evidence of this. Now toxins play a role. I try to get my patients to detoxify and reduce their exposure to toxins. Don't drink out of plastic bottles. Tear the carpet out of your house. Move to the top of a mountain where the air is pure. You know, all those practical things you can do. It might actually be best to move into a cave out in the wilderness. Just kidding, of course. Now, doctors used to think that putting women on hormones reduce heart risk. Unfortunately, the use of artificial progesterone increases heart disease. It doesn't mean that all the evidence that we had before is wrong. It just means that synthetic progestin drugs are bad. There is evidence though, if you already have heart disease, especially if you take estrogen in an oral form, you may also raise your risk of a heart attack. So you don't really want to take an estrogen pill, especially if you have heart disease. Now studies have shown that Bioidentical progesterone lowers heart disease risk factors. It's the man-made progesterone that's causing the rise in heart disease, not progesterone itself. Bioidentical progesterone improves the relaxation in arteries while the progestin drugs constrict the arteries. Bioidentical progesterone reduces plaque buildup in the arteries while progestins increase it. Now, inflammation of the body is measured by the CRP blood test is increased with progestins and lowered with natural progesterone. The bottom line is that your doctor will rarely lead you in the right direction. Either they advise against all hormone therapy or they prescribe a drug hormone that increases your risk of disease or some other drug to treat your symptoms. But now you have the truth, and the truth can set you free. This is Dr. Gerhauser. Thanks for listening.